So good afternoon to each and everyone. My name is Visabella Agus, and today my group and I are going to discuss about the historical antecedents in the course of science and technology. Today we're going to talk about the events that happened a long time ago that led to the science and technology that we have today. We're going to start with the ancient times, followed by the Middle Ages, and of course, the intellectual revolution. <clears throat> so let's start off with the ancient times. The first ever civilization is the Sumerian civilization. It is the earliest known civilization. It had high degree of cooperation among its people. It is located in Mesopotamia between Tigris and Euphrates rivers. It later became Babylonia and now is called Southern Iraq. So other than having a high degree of cooperation, the people of, or the Sumerian people, were not contented with what they had during that time. And so they were curious into what things they could possibly invent. And that rose to their various technological and cultural contributions, which let's start off with the wheel before it was used for farm work and food processes. However, today it is no longer just used for food processes, but is used for transportation in order to move things and people from one place to another. Next, we have the plow, which is used to easily dig soil faster. It could cultivate larger lands. So the plow is connected to an animal, which pulls the plow, the plow and the plow digs or cultivates the land. And then the former simply just puts the seeds in there, making it faster to farm and to plant. <coughs> Next to that is we have the roads, which used bricks. So the Sumerian people added bitumen, a black sticky substance, to smoothen the road. And of course, a very important um, invention or contribution of the Sumerian people is the cuneiform. It is a system of writing. It is from Latin and Middle French roots, which means wedge-shaped. It is a significant writing system in the ancient Middle East. Next to that, we have the city of Uruk, which is the first true city in the world. It was built using only mud or clay from the river mixed with reeds, thus producing bricks. So the people of the Sumerian civilization took mud or clay from the river and then they baked it under the sun and after that as the clay or mud hardens it becomes a brick which they used into creating structures that are found in the city of Uruk. And in the heart of that city we have the ziggurat of Ur, the, a place of worship for the Sumerian people. It is called the mountain of God. It is a secret place for their chief god. Only priests could enter and just like any other structures found in the city of Uruk, it is made with bricks. Next, a very important contribution is the irrigation and dikes. It brings water to form lands and controls flooding. Because of irrigation and dikes, the Sumerian people were able to have bountiful crops and other than that, they were able to protect themselves from flooding, which is caused by an increased water in the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Of course, next to that, we have the Babylonian civilization. So Babylon was the great city of the ancient world. It is the capital of Babylonia and is a religious center. It is located in the banks of the Euphrates River. It is an important trading post and Babylon means gate of the God. It's one and very important technological and cultural contribution is the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which most of us know. It is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world and was built in honor of Queen Amidus, wife of King Nebuchadnezzar. The structure is made of several floors and each floor contains different rare ornamental plants, which is created beautifully for the dear Queen Amethyst. And next one, 
to the Babylonian civilization, we have the Egyptian civilization. It is an oasis in northeastern Africa and is concentrated along the lower reaches of the Nile River. And of course, other than the great pyramids of Egypt, the Egyptian civilization also had other great contributions for the world. Of course, one of them is the paper or papyrus. Next is ink, the hieroglyphics, cosmetics, wig, and of course, the very first clock, the water clock or clepsydra. <clears throat> So paper papers is a writing material and plant. It is a scientific name is Cyperus papyrus or paper plant. It was cultivated in the Nile Delta region. Of course, with paper, we have ink. It is created through combining suit with different chemicals to form colors. And of course, with paper and ink, we have the writing system of the Egyptian people, which is the hieroglyphics. It is a Greek word meaning sacred carving. It employs characters through pictures. So these characters may be read as pictures, may be read as symbol of pictures, or may be read as sounds. <clears throat> of course, with this, the Egyptian people also created the very first cosmetics. It was used since the fourth millennium BC. It was used for health and aesthetic means. Um, the Egyptian people wore coal around the eyes, not just to look beautiful or to have that very great cat eye, but also to cure certain eye diseases. So coal is a suit or malachite mixed with a mineral called galena. Next to that, they also created the wig, which Egyptians in the ancient days shaved their head and wore wigs to protect themselves from the sun's harmful rays. As we all know, Egypt is in a desert. And because of that, the heat of the sun is very harmful. So that's why the people before shaved their heads and created these very huge wigs for them to wear and protect themselves. And of course, the water clock or the clepsydra, which measures time by gradual flow of water, was filled with water that's allowed to escape through a hole. So as the water inside the clepsydra gradually rises, so those rise indicates a certain hour. For example, it could be an hour that has passed, two hours, and so on and so forth. So that is the very first clock of the world created by the Egyptian people. Next to the Egyptian civilization, we have the Greek civilization. It lies at the junction of Europe, Asia, and Africa, and is of course the birthplace of Western philosophy and mathematics. So they have two technological and cultural contribution, the alarm clock, which is used water, which uses water, small stones or sand to sound the alarm, it was from the idea of Plato. And of course, we have the water mill, which is used in agricultural processes. So let's see how does this alarm clock work. So we have here. So the top part is filled with water and the water goes down. And as the second pot is filled almost to the brim, that whistling sound is what the alarm clock does in order to wake up the people that's person that's sleeping. So, of course, next to that is we have the Roman civilization. The Roman civilization achieved greatness in their military, political, and social institutions. It is the cradle of politics and governance. Its technological and cultural contribution are as follows. Number one is the newspaper. The, the first newspaper is called the Gazettes. It contained announcements for the people of the Roman Empire. So these newspapers are placed all over the city where people can see certain announcement by the government, changes in laws or whatever they have to announce. Next, we have the bound books or codex, which is one of the most important advance in bookmaking before the printing press. So before they use scrolls or paper that just lies scattered all around, but since the invention of the codex or the bound books, 
The books are arranged in a way that is easy to read. And of course, from wax covers, the romance started to use animal skins, which was long lasting and of course protected the books more than wax did. Next, we have the Roman architecture, which is the greatest visual contribution of the Roman civilization. It is called the Roman Forum or Forum Romanum. It is a rectangular forum surrounded by ruins of important buildings. So as you can see, this is a huge place surrounded by different um, important structures during the Roman time and this architecture brought inspiration to the architects that we have today. And it was such a great contribution by the Roman civilization. And of course we have the Roman numerals, a device number system. It is used to meet communication and trade concerns. It lasted till late middle ages and has inherent limitations. So of course limitation because you can't reach millions or more than millions and of course it takes a lot of time to write down those letters it's actually roman numerals is a combination of the alphabet letters and so that was the number system of the, Ro the roman civilization next we have the chinese civilization the only east asian country civilization. It has written records from 4,000 years ago and is one of the great ancient civilizations with Egypt, Babylon, and India. Technological and cultural contribution includes silk, which tied China to the world. It is a natural protein fiber and is woven into textiles. It is composed of fibroin found and produced by larvae to form cocoons. The best silk is from the mulberry silkworm, which is Bombyx mori. So how did silk tie China to the world? This is because the European people were very fond of silk, or the Western people. They were very fond of silk, and because of that, the Silk Road was created in order to trade silk from China to Europe, then Europe to China. And that's how the trading started. Of course, next to that, we have the tea production, which played a central role in historical events and symbolizes loyalty, love, and a happily married life. It played a significant role in historical events because whenever there were meetings about certain disputes or creating peace talks, tea was always a part of the things that were being served to certain leaders. And tea, of course, symbolizes love and loyalty next we have of course as everybody knows the great wall of china it is the only human-made structure visible from space it was built rebuilt and extended since the ming dynasty in 1368 to 1644 it reaches 6,000 kilometers long and it required the greatest human effort among ancient constructions so overall, the Great Wall of China weigh 100 million tons of bricks, stone, and soil. Next, last but not the least, the gunpowder invented in the 9th century by alchemists. It is mixed with sulfur, charcoal, and saltpeter or potassium nitrate. Its purpose for being invented was at first an elixir for immortality, but what the alchemists did not know was that their elixir was highly explosive. So instead of creating an elixir for mortality, they actually created an elixir for death, the irony, which in fact is a very useful thing that is used until today. So because of that, guns were invented and other explosive things. Of course, here are the pictures. The silk, the tea production, gunpowder, and the Great Wall of China. So that is all for the ancient times. Next to the ancient times, we have the Middle Ages, which is reported by Miss Gretel Baruis in the next video. Medieval time or the medieval period from 500 to 1500 common era. Medieval time is also known as Middle Ages. 
Middle Age is the time after classical age of ancient Greece and Rome and before the Renaissance. So, kaning Middle Ages, nahati ni siya sa Katolo. Early Middle Ages from 500 to 1050 Common Era and High Middle Ages from 1050 to 1270 Common Era and the later end of Middle Ages from 1270 to 1500 Common Era. The beginning of the Middle Ages is called Dark Ages. It is because the great civilization of um, Rome and Greece were conquered. And also, there is no scientific accomplishments had been made in this era, no great art produced, and no great leaders born. Massive invasions and migrations were combined during this time since wars were prevalent, especially at the start of early medieval times, such technology needed in the field of weaponry, navigation, mass food, and farm production and health. There is a decrease in population after the war, but an increase in the latter part of the period. Some of the innovative minds came to this um, era. These are th some of the innovative inventions. First is the printing press by Johannes Gutenberg. Johannes Gutenberg printing press made it possible to manufacture large numbers of books for relatively little cost for the first time. So, yung ana, ka, um, yung ana akadako ang na-contribute sa printing press ni Johannes Gutenberg. Next is the microscope by Hans and Zacharias Jensen. Um, Johann, Zacharias Jensen invented the first compound microscope to develop proper medicines for illness and need medical attention from growing populations caused by massive migration and urbanization. But in, 19, in, but in 1609, Galilei perfect, perfect the first device known as the microscope. Telescope by Galileo Galilei Galilei was the first one to use the telescope to discover, among other things, that there were four moons of Jupiter. This telescope helps observe remote objects and was a great help for navigators in the medieval times. Other inventions were also discovered, such as compass, oars, and rudders, which made sea traveling easier and safer. The War Weapons Develop not only offensive tools, but also for defensive instruments. Since kanang usuman ang kuan yun, away-away itong kaninga panahon, so naghimo din sila uh, mga tools para madepensahan sa nila ilang sarili. The five most common medieval weapons were crossbow, bow, battle axe, mace, and spear. Okay. Next is the modern times from 20th century. Modern era, modern era, a period period in human history which spans from the 20th century, beginning with the period after the end of First World War and ending with the advent of the digital revolution. Massive industrialization started and the booming of the world population. So, daghan kay nahitabo sa modern era. Some of the major contributes of modern times are pasteurization by Louis Pasteur. It is a process of heating um, dairy products to kill the presence of harmful bacteria that can be spoiled faster and can consume for an expected period. So, this um, process is to make the food safe to eat. This process is named after Louis Pasteur and he is remembered for his remarkable um, breakthroughs in the cause and prevention of diseases. And his discoveries have saved many lives. So, in anak put ka, um, dako ang impact, ang contribution sa pasteurization. Petroleum refinery by Samuel Martin Care. It is used for better means of powering homes and transportation. So, karon ginagamit niya po na to niya no, um, Petroleum is used to power automobiles, factories, and power plants, or etc. And Care has been dubbed the grandfather of the American oil industry by historians. Next is the telephone by Alexander Graham Bell. So, familiar with the telephone. So, telephone. One of the greatest inventions ever allowing instant voice communication between people on different sides of the world was telephone. 
As more people get connected by trade and exploration, they needed to maintain connections and communicate in real time as well as for government communications. This telephone helps communication become more efficient and faster. And next is the calculator by Blaise Pascal. It is almost impossible for us to imagine counting large amounts of quantities and numbers without a calculator. So, sa karun bisag ako, bisag gamay lang ang mga numbers kay mangita jig ko calculator kay para masure jid nga tama ako ang answer bisag sayon ra ka ayo. So, Blaise Pascal at the age of 18 invented and built the first digital calculator as a means of helping his father perform tedious tax accounting. The device was called Pascal's calculator, the Pascal name, Pascal line, or the arithmetic. So today, calculator had a profound impact on the world, making computations quicker and more exact. So tama gininos. So money ang mga uh, some inventions of modern times or the modern era. That's all. Thank you. Good day everyone, I am Crystal Jean P. Balaba from Group 1 and today I will discuss to you the Philippine inventions. According to the well-known saying, necessity is the mother of invention, which means people invent things because the society has difficult problems that need solutions, like to meet basic human needs or to fulfill their own desires. People invent something because to make an improvement to the community. And Philippines also contributed inventions that helped the world to make easy. So first, the medical incubator by Dr. Fadel Mundo. Fadel Mundo invented a bamboo incubator in 1941 in a bid to help families in rural communities. It turns out that the death of Fadel Mundo's sister had made her want to become a doctor for the poor people. This incubator was composed of two native laundry baskets made of bamboo. It is being used by premature babies born before the mo mother's 37th week of pregnancy. Her invention has saved countless premature babies around the world. Next is Salamander and PV's Tricycle by Victor Lieve. Victor Lieve is also known for his car customization business at Toy Body Kits. He teamed up with H2O Technologies to develop the H2O Salamander or simply Salamander. The main purpose why and they invent it is to find a solution to the country's flood problem. It can sit six people on land and four people in water. That can sail through Manila's flooded streets. Another is the salt lamp of Isa Mihino. Isa Mihino is an engineer who was inspired by members of the Butbut tribe Kalinga who relay on kerosene lamps for their main source of lightning. The salt or sustainable alternative lighting lamp consists purely of salty water into which two electrodes are placed. This lamp can generate enough power to charge smartphones via the USB port on the side of the device. Bit Microchip by Diosdado Banato. Banato is also known as Bill Gates of the Philippines, an engineer, inventor, entrepreneur, aviator, and a philanthropist from Igig, Cagayan Valley. He invented 16-bit microchip, the first single-chip graphical user interface accelerator that made computers work a lot faster and capable of transferring 16 bits of data at a time. Next is Mosquito Visidal or Larvicidal Trap developed by DOST ITDI or Department of Science and Technology, Industry Technology Development Institute which aims to control the population of the dengue carrying Aedes mosquitoes. Inside the trap, there is a solution that kills the eggs and larvae, preventing mosquitoes from reaching adulthood. Take note that the solution in the trap is potent against mosquitoes but safe for humans and animals. We have here erythromycin discovered by Abelardo Aguilar, a class of medications called macrolide antibiotics. It is used to treat a wide variety of bacterial infections and used to prevent certain bacterial infections. The underlined words is a kind of medications that stops the growth of bacteria, but it will not work for viral infections like flu or common colds. External Vaginal Cleanser by Dr. Virgilio Mala. Dr. Virgilio Malang, also known as Billy Malang, a famous inventor of feminine hygiene or the external vaginal cleanser. It is meant to cleanse the vulva such as Dutch's feminine wipes and soap, but some women refuse to use vaginal cleanser because it leads them to allergic reaction and irritations as the vagina naturally flushes out bacteria.
Next, we have Quink Ink by Francisco Kissambing. Kissambing is the inventor of Quink Ink used by the Parker Pen Company. Quink Ink is an innovative ink that is quick to dry, water resistant, does not blot, and will not fade. And it is considered as one of the best selling ink in all fountain pens. And the last one is Jeepney by Leonardo Salvador Sarao Sr., the most popular mode of transportation in the Philippines. He was the first entrepreneur to see this a real business opportunity for mass transport in the country. Sarao designed jeeps that were more functional, that includes extending the vehicle's body to accommodate more passenger and integrating railings on top of the jeep to hold cargo. His invention changed the life of generations of the Filipinos. Overall, inventions made our life easy and smooth. Throughout history, many bright minds have thought many great ideas. There are still many inventions here in the Philippines. Some of those brought about inventions that changed our lives forever. And with that, we have to value all those things. That would be all. Thank you for listening. Good afternoon, everyone. In this point of time, we'll be discussing the Intellectual Revolution as well as the Copernican Revolution. So what is Intellectual Revolution? It is used to refer to Greek speculation about the nature in the period before Socrates, which is roughly before 600 to 400 BCE. It is also called as the pre-Socratic period, non-theological or first philosophy. It is the period where paradigm shifts occurred. Meaning, dito sa intellectual revolution, ito yung period where drastic change occurred. And that is because of the different perspectives of great scientists and philosophers like Claudius Ptolemy, Nicholas Copernicus, Charles Darwin, and Sigmund Freud. Sila yung mga tao na nanguna sa kanilang mga revolution in their own respective fields. And because of them, people was enlightened from what is true and what is hoax. So, Copernican Revolution, dito sa revolution na ito, there is a shift in the field of astronomy from a geocentric understanding of the universe centered around Earth to a heliocentric understanding centered around Sun. It gives us an important framework for understanding the universe and this revolution was named in honor of Nicholas Copernicus. So, mamaya, malalaman natin kung bakit nga ba pinangalan kay Copernicus ang revolution na ito and why there is a change that happened from a geocentric understanding to a heliocentric understanding in the field of astronomy. So first, we discuss muna natin yung geocentric theory. So this is coined by Claudius Ptolemy, which was a Greek mathematician, astronomer, geographer, and astrologer. He lived in the city of Alexandria in the Roman province of Egypt under the rule of the Roman Empire. He discovered that the earth was the center of the universe and that the word for earth in Greek is geo. So later, his ideas is called geocentric theory. So, in this theory, ito yung pinapost ni Claudius Ptolemy. Ito yung talaga yung pinaniniwalaan ng mga tao noon. Naniniwala sila na yung Earth talaga yung center ng universe. While, on the other hand, the heliocentric model naman is proposed by Nicholas Copernicus, a Polish astronomer from the late 16th century onward. In his theory, he says that the sun is at rest near the center of the universe and that the Earth, which is spinning on its axis once a day and revolves annually around the sun. It is also called as the heliocentric or sun-centered system. So, makikita natin yung kaibahan ng dalawang theory, ng dalawang model. Yung kanina, yung Earth dahil yung nasa center ng universe. Dito naman, pinapost ni Copernicus na hindi Earth ang center. Ang sun yung center. Yung Earth is just revolving around the sun annually and it's just spinning on its axis once a day. Dito naman, makikita natin yung kaibahan talaga ng geocentric tsaka ng heliocentric. Ito yung kay Claudius Ptolemy na geocentric model. Makita talaga natin dito. Sinasabi niya yung Earth talaga yung nasa center. While on the other hand, yung kay Nicholas Copernicus naman tsaka yung heliocentric model niya, ito yun, makita talaga natin na ginigiit niya talaga na yung sun is the center. And on Nicholas Copernicus part naman, hindi talaga naging madali para sa kanya na kumbinsihin at himukin yung mga tao na paniwalaan yung pinupropose, na, pinupropose niya na yung sun 
yung center because it was hard for the people to change or to alter their mind and the understanding kasi pinaniwalaan na talaga nila noon na yung earth yung center. It's hard for them to adjust. It's hard for them to believe and to grasp, embrace the new idea, discovery of Copernicus na yung sun, yung center. But then, as time passes by, many supported the works of Copernicus that finally helped convince people and change their knowledge as well as perception of the world. So, when the time comes na na-convince na ni Copernicus yung mga tao, na change na ni Copernicus yung knowledge nila tsaka yung perspective nila sa world, especially in the field of astronomy, na yung sun talaga yung center. That moment was the beginning of what we called as the birth of modern astronomy. Kasi nawala na yung maling paniniwala na yung Earth yung center. Nandito na tayo sa time na alam na natin yung totoo na yung sun talaga yung center. And that moment was called as the birth of modern astronomy. So that is all about the Copernican Revolution. Mamaya is malalaman pa natin at matatakal pa natin yung Iba pang mga revolution na nangyari sa intellectual revolution such as the revolution of Charles Darwin and Sigmund Freud revolution. We're going to tackle about the Darwinian revolution. The man quest for knowledge is knowing about the origin of life. Are we really created by divine force or descend from a monkey? And how did it all begin? Well, it all started with the concept of Charles Darwin also known as an English naturalist and the father of evolution. So question, so how did he come up with his ideas about the evolution? Well, Darwin had an extraordinary journey before hundreds of experiments and spent 20 years refining his ideas about evolution. These are some discoveries of Darwin as he observed that these species are being considered as one of his clues to his theory of evolution. So that's why he came up with the idea describes new organism change over time as a result of changes in heritable physical or behavioral traits. There are two main points about Darwin's theory of evolution. First, all creatures of the earth is all connected and related to each other. Second, he believes that the main process that brings about evolution is natural selection. When we say natural selection, it is often described as survival of the fittest, where it is the process whereby organisms better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. Finally, 20 years later, in the year 1859, Darwin presented his published book titled The Origin of Species where theory of evolution was produced. However, his theory became controversies as people perceived that it is against the church teaching. But decades later, some people changed the general thinking regarding Darwin's theory of evolution, which gains a better understanding of our world. Next, we're going to talk about the Freudian revolution. Sigmund Freud is also known as the father of psychoanalysis. He was able to change people's concept about psychology, which defined a study of mind and behavior, with his revolutionary theory of psychoanalysis. What is psychoanalysis? Well, the study that explains human behavior. In his theory, he explained that there is a lot of conscious and unconscious factor that can influence the behavior and emotion. Conscious is a small amount of activity we know about. Example, when you wake up early in the morning. Unconscious, it is defined as a reservoir of feelings, thoughts, urges, and memories that outside of conscious awareness. Example, when you felt anger or feeling bias or having a compulsive behavior and many more. He argued that personality is a product of three conflicting elements. It is the ID, ego, and superego. ID is based on our pleasure principle, while ego operates based on the reality principle. 
Superego incorporates the values and morals of society which are learned from one parent and others. So this is Freud's view of human mind, the mental iceberg. It composes conscious level, subconscious level, unconscious level. In conscious level, it has thoughts and perceptions, while subconscious level, memories and stored knowledge. While in unconscious level, there's a lot, fears, violent motives, unacceptable sexual desires, irritational wishes, immoral urges, shameful experiences, and selfish needs. Freud had invented a successful science of mind that changed the way the society dealt and thought with people to overcome abnormal behavior and develop as individual. But many people believe that Freud theory had no scientific basis as no empirical and experimental data could support. But then, despite my criticism, Freud was able to respond satisfactorily to the challenges of life. And sooner enough, people were able to understand the concept of psychoanalysis, which eventually resulted in classifying psychology as a science. So that's for all today. Thank you.